السلام علیکم برہان خان ایک بار پھر آپ کی خدمت میں حاضر ہے ایک نیا لائیو سیشن لے کر اور ان شاء اللہ تعالی ہم آپ سے جڑے رہیں گے اس میں اور جیسے جیسے ہمارا جو پینل ہے وہ آئے گا اس کو ہم میں ذرا اس کو پبلک کر دوں ان شاء اللہ تعالی پھر آپ سے بات ہوتی ہے جی تو سب سے پہلے ہم تھوڑا سا اقبال کا ایک کلام سنتے ہیں اور دو منٹ کے لیے اور پھر اس کے بعد بات چیت شروع کریں گے اور آج کے ٹاپک کے اوپر بات کریں گے دل مسلم کو وہ زندہ تمنا دے السلام علیکم لیڈیز اینڈ جینٹل مین بوائز اینڈ گرلس ٹوڈے وی آر ویری امپورٹنٹ ٹاپک وی آر ہیئر ٹو ڈسکس اباؤٹ دی کلچرل ابیوز اینڈ ود اس وٹ اے بیٹر وے ٹو اسٹارٹ اے پروگرام ٹو اسٹارٹ ود یور اون فیملی آئی ہیو مائی ٹو یگ ڈاٹرز جوائننگ می ود دس سیشن ٹو اسٹارٹ آف ود اینڈ لیٹس ٹاک اباؤٹ اے کلچرل ابیوز فیملی ابیوز domestic abuse domestic challenges youth are bringing rape sexual assault and stereotype of a culture i would like to introduce uh, my daughter amara khan amara welcome to the show uh hello um, i'm amara khan and um i'm a journalism student i'm in fourth uh, year currently hopefully soon to graduate and um i have a minor in anthropology So I have studied uh, linguistics, um, anthropology, and I just wanted to share kind of like a picture of men and women and how they use the in- English language differently. So I'm not even talking Adha, about- We'll get to that, Amara. We'll get to that, Amara. Let me sure. introduce our, the youngest uh, of a Khan clan. I have my, with me uh, my younger daughter, Parisa Khan. Parisa, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Parisa Khan. I'm Speak the youngest. I, um, I'm in eighth grade at the moment. I'm 13. I am very passionate about this subject. I think we need to talk about it more and it's not talked about enough, especially in the Desi community. And I'm honored to be here alongside my sister and my dad. Thank you very much, Parisa. Uh, I'm sorry. I want, uh, I'm sorry. Amara, let's, uh, let's talk about uh, the subject. The subject is a cultural abuse. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that we have, uh, you have, we have, uh, you know, a very illustrious uh, student from MRIU, your own university, yeah. uh, MS, uh, PSA, Pakistan mm-hmm. Student Affiliation. They will be joining us, the whole group with us. Along with them, we have one of the best Calgary's uh, uh, District 5 lawyer, Mr. Fezan, but he will be talking to us uh, on a stream yard. Just like, a, let's, let's start about it. Let's, let's start about our whole, you know, the thing. And then, you know, uh, uh, thank you very much, first of all, coming on live. And Parisa, thank you. Uh, I really appreciate that. That you come up here and talking about the stereotype of our Desi community. 
and uh, community in general and a gender stereotype yeah. amara you were talking about the linguistic yeah so um uh, yeah so basically i studied linguistics um so it's basically the history of languages and um i'm not even talking about pakistan like not yet i will but um i'm just talking about north american culture and how even they have the these issues that we have and you know it's a historical it's a issue that we've all been dealing with globally globally and um so basically men and women um it was noted that men and women use the english language differently now men tend to be a little bit more assertive and directive with their use of language women tend to be a little bit more gentle they use um more colorful words so they will describe things in a very gentle kind manner like lovely extravagant men don't really use those words um also um women tend to use more will i can i may i please um men tend to use more strong words like um i will i should i am you know and um there was a really good example in my textbook where there is a car parked in front of the woman's um car and the woman says uh will you please move your car and then they show the exact example when a man is in the put in the same situation and the man is saying um your car is right here move it or can you move it so there there tends to be a more authoritarianism in a male's voice um so that's really interesting because that really sets up the the picture here that women are tend to be a little bit more vulnerable like in today's society we are becoming stronger and we are becoming more authoritative but even when women do become authoritative they're kind of seen as um they there's a lot of name calling um they're seen as a you know a bitch um they're especially if they're in a higher position if they're a boss and they ask their um like a male counterpart that hey could you you didn't hand in this uh file i asked for on tuesday and now it's thursday they're seen as oh she's she's just a bitch right or she's miserable with her life or something so that's really interesting that we it, even in north american society there is this picture that's already painted so it's kind of hard for women to live up like live like kind of just move past this and you know even in the 19th century politics and government were matters of men the women were not even allowed to um vote or discuss politics they or debate they they were seen as not even capable of rational thought they were um i i think i was reading in a woman and gender studies textbook that they were even seen as animals at that time that they just had the capacity of an animal and they were put to But amara we are we're not living in a 19th century amara sorry to yeah. cut you off we're not living yeah, yeah, in a yeah. 19th century we're living in a 2020 yeah like we're educated I, people the thing is at the time is this right now that i am sitting with my two daughters uh, could mm -hmm. you think that imagine going back uh, 50 years ago this is was possible but i'm going to bring pari here pari what do you think yeah. of this Um I think yeah women go through a lot of troubles I am a woman and there is like a lot of light shed on that topic but I also want to talk about men like men are seen as like strong and they have to bring money back to the family they have to put food on the table they have to be very muscular and um he mentally strong but in reality men are 75% more likely to commit suicide um and if if you see a man who's emotionally vulnerable or he's more sensitive i know a lot of people will be like oh he's gay why is he gay why do you assume that he's just being more sensitive and vulnerable mm -hmm. <laughs> 
what what do you think pari your age group what do you deal with that on a daily life to uh, one on a daily basis as a women as a desi background going to school and dealing with this kind of a, what is your experience uh well in my experience like gay and um you know like oh your your week is very is a very popular slur that's passed around like i i someone my friend let's say he'll be crying about something and someone will be like oh you're gay you're weak why that's a natural thing you're sad you're going to cry and as a woman it's it's like if you act independent and um if you act like a strong leader people say you're manly oh you're being so you're being such a bitch you're being too controlling i mean um uh yeah you're being too controlling and you're being bossy like let's say i'm working in a group and my i want to get work done and i'm telling people that oh let's work on this let's work on this and then tomorrow we can work on it th- on this they'll say oh you're so you're being so bossy you're being such a bitch why am i being a bitch if a man was doing it you'd say he has such a great worth of work ethic so yeah amara you you were saying so you want to say something to that pari what you just uh said yeah i was going to say i do agree with you it isn't the 19th century anymore it is 2020 but there is these because it's so historical and because these are in these concepts are instilled in our society we are still struggling with them today like um like buddy's example that was a really good one that um she she's trying to be author, authoritative and you know people are calling her bossy like you know and no and nobody likes to be bossy that's a very negative connotation to use uh on a person so I find that really interesting. Um I I'll go more back into the present now. Um there are there's still the wage gap. The pay wage gap is 40% between male and female in Alberta right now. So that means that there's a 40% percentile like um uh men are getting 40% more than women in, in income when they're doing the same job and um the high most of this is because of maternity leave or the expectation that a woman will eventually have kids so um they will you know they're just like well she's not going to be here forever she's going to go at some time so they don't pay her as much so that's really interesting because like there a lot of women are different not everyone wants to be a mother some women want to be more career oriented and they're not really getting the amount of pay that they deserve so i i i feel like that See, that, also- that, that's that's a one one aspect of it uh, mm-hmm. what i am saying is let's say uh are are women being judged the way they dress and the way they walk and the way they talk pari Oh yeah, definitely. How? I know. Let's say I if you will, are if you are going in a desi function, what do you have to watch out for? Let's yeah. say if uh, your dad calls up uh, a dinner with the community and then you are all obviously invited, what are the things do's and don'ts you are always concerned about? Um or for your brother's concert or whatever. <laughs> uh well, you have to be covered obviously. and i don't really have a problem with that but um you have to be covered you have to be nice you have to be quiet you have to be shy you don't want to be too loud or else people will think that you're obnoxious um you don't want to be rude you always want to be nice even if the person's being rude to you and especially not even in desi functions like i will be walking down the street or not walking up i'll be walking to school and it's winter so i have my whole like interact on and, and like smirk at me and call me like weird and be like oh where are you going just like that and i'm wearing a full winter jacket so it's not really even about clothes 
it's just our whole culture really not even in the desi culture just it is society. it is do you do you think uh, uh, when you are walking to the school and somebody smirks at you or wink at you or make a remark do you feel safe in today's date in calgary alberta in walking Cal let's say um, it's uh, 8 15 right now would you be walking alone on the street and be comfortable no why would you say that well it's very scary like uh even in calgary there's this podcast i forgot what it was called but we have such a high crime right now nobody's safe um even in our neighborhood there's so many creepy people and it's so scary being a woman or just being a person being a person in general um yeah good thank you very much pari it's really uh, very informative amara what do you have to say about it um uh, i just noticed maria made a comment in the facebook she was saying that women who wear abaya can even be dealt with abuse like they can ha they they are also dealing with abuse um yes mariam i agree with that um actually uh what i think is that there are males and they they dealt with certain traumas in their life and uh so certain men have hostility towards women like the like they're rapist or you know and um they have a hostility towards me women because they either grew up in a environment where uh their mother wasn't very kind to them or there was some sort of female figure in their life who wasn't very kind to them so they translate that into their relationships they uh, feel the need to abuse women, humiliate them, degrade them, because they have their own personal vendetta. And it's actually, it's a, it's a sort of trauma they're dealing with. And these people can get help, like they can get counseling and, you know, but it's a very working process. Like it's not easy for these people to get out of that mind frame to not abuse women. They, and I'm not justifying in any way. I'm saying, I'm just saying that this is what the human mind does sometimes is that um, they just, they see also there's opportunist rapists. So they're, types of people who are in a put in a situation and they think that oh because i i have the opportunity to do it i why not and no one can hold me accountable and when they do when they are held accountable they make excuses like oh she was dressed maybe or, or okay so a bias so maybe she she never listened to me or she wasn't obedient she was an obedient she was not a an obedient wife or you know, I, um, she did this, I didn't like it, the way she was acting towards me, so I did that. That's why she deserves the, what I gave her. So there's that mentality as well. So um, it's there should be no excuses for abuse, and no matter how you dress, it shouldn't be an excuse. Um, but there is a lot of victim slut, slut shaming, sorry my words, um, uh, with, I see a common trend and it's more common in North American society where if a girl is wearing a short mini skirt, oh, she's asking for attention or something, right? So um, that's my response to your comment. I hope I was helpful. Thank you. What do you say to that about Pari? Oh, as I was saying, sorry, first of all, I just wanted to say about the bio thing. I was saying that it was winter. I'm fully dressed. I have a winter coat on. I have a hat on. I have earmuffs on, everything. And there's still these men winking at me, smirking at me, saying, oh, where are you going? Can I give you a ride? And not, can I give you a ride in a nice way, in a, you know, that way. So, and it's not, and yes, it's not even the time or anything like that. Like at school, um, there's so many instances where you're you feel uncomfortable and you don't feel safe um and yeah desi gora whatever american canadian anybody it happens everybody acts that way 
I thank you very much, uh, Pari and Amara. I really appreciate that you're joining me. Now I have a, a people, a group of people from um, Amara. You can go if you like. And uh, thank you very much. You want to say a final word? Yeah, I just wanted to say it was an honor joining you, and thank you so much. And uh, and yeah, love you, Dad. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, Pari, what do you have to say? Final message. Yeah, thank you for having me to talk about this stuff. Do you, you think maybe we should more talk about this? Yeah. And it is important? Mm -hmm. Okay, openly. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pari. I really appreciate that you can go. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to add in uh, some of my friends. Uh, please, uh, you know, keep, keep tell you keep your camera on because this is a open discussion. And if you cannot keep uh, keep your camera on, uh, that would make it as difficult to uh, make up you know, um, put a face to a name. And since we are discussing a uh, very important issue and uh, it, it is important that people see you. We are all like I am uh, to me. And that's why I brought my two daughters first to make it more ease for all the other girls who are here that uh, you are on a safe environment. You are uh there that uh, your father figure is here thank you very much uh, for hassan rizvi uh basharat awan mahnoor yunus and uh bisma shakur assalamu alaikum bisma i'm gonna bring bisma in and i'll ask her to introduce her group uh alaikum bisma wa alaikum salam um can you hear me i can okay. hear you very well mashallah okay. you look like my daughter pari <laughs> yeah. Um, so, thank you all. Uh, Hello, Assalamu yeah. alaikum. Wa alaikum uh, assalam. My name is Bismar Shakur, like you introduced. I am a third year student at Harvard University. I am the director of communications at MRU. Um, but firstly, I'd like to thank you for your valuable time today, you know, to discuss about this campaign and for all the support that you've given us throughout. Um, I think it's it's very like it's it's very nice to have people like this that can openly you know discuss certain matters, um, and I would first I guess I'll start with uh, introducing my team like you already have. But uh, Iza is our president, Iza Nazir Ahmed, uh, Mahnoor Yunus is the vice president of PSA, uh, Mohammed Bashar Tawan is our club advisor, and Hassan Rizvi is the junior exec for communications. So this is my amazing team, and we're all here today to discuss this. Welcome you all here. All these illustrious, uh, great minds are with me today. And please be easy. I'm an old man. So <laughs> I know you guys have a lot of uh, things to talk about. It. It's an open mic session. We will not take any question at the moment, but if there is a time come. We will get it on. OK, I have muted you all, and but I've given you privilege to unmute yourself. So when you speak, please unmute. And when you're not speaking, uh, uh, mute yourself. So let's say, Bisma, what is the uh, role of uh, PSA here in uh, Mount Royal University? You you heard Amara talking about it. She's, uh, I think, senior final year. OK. Yeah. So yeah. give us a little bit of a background about your um, organization. Yeah, for sure. So um, we are the Pakistan Students Affiliation. Uh, we started this club back in, I think, 2019, the winter semester. So we're relatively a very new club, I would say. Uh, we started this club to, you know, promote our culture, to, you know, make Pakistan culture aware. Because Mount Royal, personally, we don't see that many Pakistani students at Mount Royal. We have a very small community of Pakistanis to, you know, provide something for those people so that they can feel like they're together. Um, so we started this club to a, like to serve and represent our community by maintaining our values. Our club is involved in supporting the community and have, we've actively engaged in multiple events uh, throughout the small time that we've had, a year and a half. Um, we collaborated with PCA, the Pakistani uh, Calgary community, um, with to do like the car rallies to support the frontline workers. Uh, we did multiple, I think, car rallies throughout Calgary. Uh, in Southwest and Northeast and Northwest, um, we went to different fire stations and police stations and all to, you know, to show our support for them because it was definitely, in the pandemic, it's become a difficult time. Um, 
We've also arranged a fundraiser during the month of Ramadan for the organization Muslims Friends Welfare. It is run by Mr. Khazir Hayat Khan. Um, this organization, I think, was is really is this, you know the best thing that I think we've accomplished so far in our journey. Um, it provides orphans and widows in back in Pakistan with the basic necessities. Uh, it gives uh, it provides training for widows. You know, uh, teaches them how to stitch, how to make kapre and stuff, so they can earn an income for themselves in the future. Um, they provide the orphans with textbooks and uniforms and, you know, multiple school necessities so they can get a proper education and they can, you know, build their their future. Um, so we we accomplished around two thousand two hundred dollars in the month in one month. So I think that was very great for a new club, I would say. I think we did really well, alhamdulillah. Um, and we like right now we were trying to you know guide overseas students as well back in pakistan who would like to apply for international students and stuff and like you know how to apply what the process is um is mount royal good or what are the options in canada like mount royal ufc and all these like you know amazing universities um so i think honestly like with our it's a it's a new club like i said um we've accomplished quite a bit in our short time and i'm sure the list the list will be expanding as we establish and you know grow more um, but yeah, that's that's kind of what PSA is. We're trying to promote our community to make people more aware about, you know, Pakistani uh, students affiliation and just promote our culture. So, um, and as of our club, I would say, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, that, that's a very good uh, introduction. Thank you very much. Now, who would you like to have uh, the stage? You are kind of a my co, uh, you know, moderator too. So, yeah. so would you, who would you like to invite? I would like Mahnoor Yunus to go ahead. Mahnoor, you can only mute yourself. Assalam yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, like this must said, we are a student club that aims to promote our Pakistani heritage in our university. However, I think with such a platform, there comes a responsibility. Um, and being Pakistani Canadian, it is our responsibility to raise awareness about certain social issues. And one of them is the rape culture in Pakistan. Now, sexual assault in general is a silent epidemic in Pakistan. It's still considered taboo, which is surprising because it happens so often. And in Punjab alone, there have been 10,000 reported cases involving women and children. Um, many more are unreported. So there could be more, um, which I'm sure there are more. Um, and the conviction rate is extremely low at under 3%. So even if you do get accused um, and you get jailed, you might not even get convicted. Um, and you know, the success of a nation is judged on how they treat their women. In 2018, a poll ranked Pakistan as the sixth most dangerous country worldwide for women. So clearly the women of Pakistan do not feel safe. They are treated as second-class citizens. Um, they must have security, protection, and freedom, and they deserve that. And after all, if a, you know, if women thrive, a society thrives. So throughout our campaign, we have made conscious efforts also to use the word survivor instead of victim when addressing those that have been subject to rape. Um, victim is just very disempowering. So even throughout our letter and our video, we have, you know, it, it was a conscious effort to not say victim. And those who have been raped should not feel defined by it. And so it's our responsibility to empower them and speak out against the unjust treatments these survivors face in both the court of public opinion and court of law. And of course, in an ideal world, we hope our small campaign can bring about positive change. But our primary goal was to raise awareness and normalize speaking about these issues. Um, these assaults are still happening. We have reports in the news every other day. So we need to act fast and we need to act now because being quiet about them won't make them go away. Whoever has the power to help should help. Um, and I think Iza can take it from here. You know, this is basically wonderful uh, what you said. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Iza, I'll let you speak. The thing is, it is a time. It is a time to speak up. You heard uh, uh, my daughter, who's a final student at the University of Calgary, and you heard somebody who's going in a junior high. The trauma and the tragedy is the same whether you are an authoritarian position or you are an innocent uh, walker. This is the power. And you said very beautifully that when we say victim, I, I don't see victim. They are the survivor. And you know, there is a, a <clears throat> every day, okay, allow me to speak this in Urdu. Said, uh, 
इज्जत लूट ली गई इज्जत खराब हो गई फला औरत की उसकी कैसे इज्जत खराब हो गई इज्जत तो उसकी खराब है जिसने उसको रेप किया है and and the thing is i was watching this video a friend of mine sent me and i'm so ashamed of being a man and especially on the level of where a, a bank manager is abusing her staff female member for last 3 years and finally somebody have made his video and put it on a face uh, <clears throat> on a social media him touching a woman and i was so embarrassed to see that the such things are not even shown in the you know adult movies and that women kept it quiet and she still doesn't want to come out and talk about it the thing is those are the survivor because the, just like you said conviction rate is very low and inshallah we'll have a fazan but sahab who's a district 5 five lawyer and very aggressive lawyer he will come us and i will come and talk about it the conviction rate and everything it is important that we talked about it what what motivated me to have this session after watching your video of that banner you did that and inshallah taala will continue that and hand over to isa and let's see what you have to say uh assalam alaikum assalam thank you to all my mahar um so basically what motivated us to start this uh small campaign was the motorway rape case um qq wo kafi zyada news pe aaya tha so we believe that this uh, we should raise awareness for it and it happened on september 3rd um of the like the mother was traveling alone with her children and not only this but many other rape cases happened after this um and it really really you know pushed us to start this uh campaign because we really wanted to get our word out there and uh just convey that whatever whatever is happening in our community is wrong so like as the report came out for the motorway rape case um our hamare jo azim lahore ke ccpo hain mr umar sheikh ne kaha tha ke um jo survivor thi yahan pe she was at fault because she was traveling alone at night and she was going without her husband's permission which was basically his assumption it wasn't really um um sorry it wasn't really a statement that the survivor made it was just his assumption and honestly we think that um uh, individuals uh cannot make assumptions on others behalf because kyunki unhone ye statement di nahi thi uh the pair he doesn't have the right to make a statement on her behalf or ye such matlab ye such sabit hi hi nahi hui to phir like un un pe koi haq nahi banta tha and also um there ha uh, there's been many other cases where individuals have been raped uh specifically women and children but uh in a lot of these cases you'll find that the rapists uh garner sympathy or at the very least indifference from the public and instead they victim blames the survivors so the reason we shared like our post and our post to the pm basically highlights the tragic event that took place on uh, on an innocent life it also states how the survivors are mistreated uh in our pakistani society So basically in our post uh we asked the PM to provide justice to the survivors of rape and restore the honor that this great nation was founded upon. Uh the post see, also that's, uh, this is very good let me just uh, 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 just uh, have a little comment on it. The thing is uh, and you know that women she traveled from France she is uh, studied and educated in France and you know one of the most modern <coughs> world uh, uh, country in the world as per they say and she went to teach her kids islamic values and have them learn a pakistani culture and this is what they are faced can you imagine that little child the those children living with the trauma of their life what went through that hour and a half with them and with their mother and the ccpo coming in and making that such a you know broader statement because just like this is what amara was saying that these are the main chauvinist that exist 
whether it's in Pakistan on here, wherever we go, that we have always we always become a judgmental. And your 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 valuable video, it has reached to a lot of people and it reached me. And that's why we're talking about it. You see, the motorway case motivated bringing a lot of things that the recently the Kashmir case that the, the lady was hop, uh, kept hostage for four days and being gang raped. And then they freed her in a promise and they kept her four year old daughter and kept her sexually assaulting her too. And she has now a very bad infection and she may not survive the four year old girl. My, you know, my, my soul is shaken. So therefore talking about it brought these subject into the light and I congratulate you guys that you are doing it. Every little bit helps. So please continue. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yes. Um, again, um, um, so basically, Johamaria nation, great nation, Pakistan, just bunyat pe banata. We want to restore um, that honor again. Because people are looking at us that their country is safe. Although we should be proud of our country, um, how far we've come. Or just to think of that, that if there is also rape today, then a lot of people just lose faith, you know. Um, again, like our post, mashallah, thank you guys for like reposting it. Uh, we really really appreciate it the only thing we demand is justice and reform to end the stigma um justice for the survivors and you know we just ask this little favor from like the higher authorities you get hum zada se zada we can raise our voices we can raise our voices to shake the ground but we can't really we don't have the power to shake the ground you know and sorry, just to um, just to add to what Iza said, there there's a saying by Omar ibn al Khattab, the Sahaba of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he said that the Islamic State is is one in which a woman traveling with jewels can travel safely without harassment, and we are the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, so we do have that added factor of responsibility. Get, you know, we have something that we have to live up to. Some, you know, that that is a big deal to be the Islamic Republic and to have these kind of cases happen and also for the survivors to not get justice and to be treated like this, um, it, it's a shame. Thank you. Uh, how about uh, we bring some men into the subject and then let's see what they have to say. Uh, how about uh, who wants to be, the, yeah, Hassan Bhai. Please, Hello. 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 First Hello. Of all, uh, introduce yourself a little bit and then. First of all, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Burhan Sahib, that you gave us the opportunity. I would like to thank uh, uh, Bisma for the wonderful club introduction, Mahnoor for outlining the key issues, and Iza talking about what became our motivation. Well, uh, talking about from a male perspective, like you said, we are very ashamed. It is a troubling time. It is a tough situation. And no one should be seeing this, uh, especially when the statement was made by the authority that uh, the lady was at fault. Uh, it was the most troubling of times. That uh, although uh, what this became essentially what I wanted to talk about in today in today's uh, interview, that our topic today is to tackle sexual violence, domestic abuse, and all of those things. But I think it is far more important to bring forward the fact that. Uh, most countries have strict laws about rape cases. For example, Canada has a minimum five-year term if you are convicted, and it goes up to uh, very tough terms. And if we bring it in the case of Pakistan, there is imprisonment for 10 to 25 years, or what we call the capital punishment, the death penalty. However, in the last few, few years, despite all of these measures, all of these laws, rape is increasing. So what I wanted to talk about is to go into the roots of the trouble. Today, in my opinion, what I like to say is we face this problem not because of weak punishments or not because of societal issues, but it's because we have weak and corrupt justice systems. Like Isa mentioned earlier, there's a 3% uh, conviction rate. 
And I think this is one of the major issues we need to talk about when bringing uh, most of the topics, especially rape cases, on, uh, uh, onto line. Let me bring to you Zainab Ansari. We all know about this incident. It is very saddening, very tough. A seven-year-old girl. She was ab abducted, raped, strangled, and moreover thrown into the garbage disposal. And what was she attempting to do? To go to a Quran class. What? Where have we reached? What is happening? A seven-year-old girl, girl, and she's raped, abducted, thrown into a garbage uh, pile. And let me tell you about another news. Like you mentioned, surfaced four days ago. A mother and her four-year-old daughter kidnapped, gang raped for two weeks. As well, like I can tell you now, the new statistics are, are saying that there are 11 new rape cases being reported in Pakistan on the daily. These are the cases that are being reported. But now tell me, how many voices have been suppressed? Why were they suppressed? To save the honor of a man? To save the valor of a father? Or to save the dignity in front of society? What is happening to our community? Where is the time that Rasulullah said, Fatima meri aankhon ki thanda ke. She's the coolness of my eyes. And he faced a people where they wanted to kill the woman. Where they wanted to bury the daughter alive. In that time, Rasulullah said that she's the coolness of my eyes. And today, a seven-year-old is being gang raped. Today, a woman, a mother traveling on a highway in front of her children is gang raped. I would like to bring upon one of the uh, co uh, uh, classmates of mine who is willing to speak on this, Bashar Bhai. What is happening? What do we talk about? How are we going to make the change? We talked about the victims. We talk about the situations, the scenarios, what happened and what the statistics are. But how do we bring about change? So today we are here to change the direction of our case. When a child is raped, then everyone feels the pain. When a mother is raped in society, then society has also pain. But the question is, why do we need to raise our voice for the media? Why do we need to raise our voice for the world? इसके बाद जाके हुकूमती दारों को ने कोशिश क्यों स्टार्ट करनी होती हैं? सवाल ये है कि is our democracy bonded by media popularity? आज हम यहाँ एक प्रपोजल के साथ आए हैं जो है तब्दीली। हम लोग हम लोगों की ज़हनियत की तब्दीली चाहते हैं। क्यों हम उस औरत और बच्ची को कसूरवार तहराते हैं जो इसका शिकार होती है? क्यों हम उनका साथ नहीं देते? एक इंसान पहले ही इतने बड़े सदमे से जा रहा होता है और हम उस पे ऐड ऑन कर देते हैं उनकी मुश्किलात बढ़ाते हैं आज मेरा खूंटी इदारों से सिर्फ एक मसूमाना सा सवाल है हाउ लॉन्ग टिल जस्टिस इज सर्व्ड विदाउट हैविंग टू इंपोज इट हर रोज पाकिस्तान में तकरीबन 11 केसेस दर्ज होते हैं जब लोगों ने शोर मचाना शुरू किया हमारी मीडिया ने आवाज बुलंद की तो हमारे सो कॉल्ड जस्टिस सिस्टम ने एकदम से सजाएं और स्टेटमेंट देना शुरू कर देते हैं लेकिन जब लेकिन अब जब सारी स्टेट में सारी अटेंशन मीडिया की बलूचिस्तान के इलेक्शंस पे चली गई है तो कौन नजर आ रहा है इस बात पे बात करने वाला वी हैवंट हर्ड एनी डिसीजन और एनी कवरेज एस टू व्हाट द हाउस वाज डूइंग टू प्रोवाइड जस्टिस टू दोस रोंग्ड इसका जवाब तो ये है ना कि व्हेन फोर्स इज प्रेशर फोर्स एंड प्रेशर इज रिमूव्ड जस्टिस इज रिमूव्ड एज़ वेल मेरा आप लोगों से हाथ जोड़ के एक रिक्वेस्ट है प्लीज डोंट विक्टिमाइज हु इज अब्यूज्ड don't make the rapist in the center of attention. Bashar, by beautiful well words. Well, well said and very, very, very well taken. Our uh, program it is watched by some of the important people in the, uh, the present government or PTI. And inshallah, you will hear that too. Usme baat ye ke first thing first, that the incident or the... Uh, I This is something you, can, you cannot even name it. It is so inhumane and it's uh, whatever happens to the survivor just like i said then they have then they and the family have to live with that shame that the good girl that woman was raped we don't say that she's a survivor we blamed her it's the blaming 
the shaming of that we have to change the mentality just like uh, on the beginning amara was saying that we have to change the way we bring up our children at home that's basically what it is we have to change that 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 person was walking like my daughter was saying that if she's walking to the school and somebody abducted her imagine being a father what will go to me and to you guys ye to hamari bad kismat hai when 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 she is alive or something then the people oh you know what she was walking maybe she's a dressed up like that ye to hamesha makeup iska to khatam hi nahi hota this is basically what we are living main aaj aapko i'm going to admit that probably my wife is watching that and uh, hopefully and this is my apology to her and to you guys all we are uh, driving around uh, this afternoon after having uh, some things to done and she put on a music and she said this is made mentality please now this is uh, think about it and i'm going to put myself on the uh, pedestal and she put on a music which is adele uh, adele singer remember and i said oh begum is bichari ko talaq ho gayi hai can give why she bichari burhan she was living in abusive relationship she got the divorce acha ab main as a burhan khan jo ke 3 ghante ke baad ek program kar raha hu ye soch is bichari ko talaq ho gayi hai my apologies to my wife and to all of you and to myself shaming it that being divorced is not a bichari she have decided to come out of that abusive relationship that's i just wanted to make it a public and apologize to my wife and to myself and to all of you that i made that comment because i brought up that way. please go ahead that is your greatness and a very beautiful uh, commitment you've made to yourself to apologize publicly in front of everyone uh, i think it is uh, and i was ashamed is. i said no here i am here i am holding a very good uh, discussion and the way with the chair she put on music and i said oh you know bichari got divorce ho gayi hai he said why is she bichari totally i am so ashamed but that's the way i have been grilled in the society so i have to change myself so decided that i am going to come down with my two daughters and discuss it uh-huh. very great so of you sir we all really have to change it. i still have a lot of work to do on myself myself so therefore but just like aapne basharat kaha na ki hame hum authority jo hai jaise ke manur ne baat ki iza ne baat ki hasan ne aur bisma ne ke madina madina riyasat banne se madina riyasat nahi banegi kehne se nahi banegi jab tak burhan khud change nahi hoga मैं अपने किए पर शर्मिंदा नहीं हूं तब तक नहीं बन सकता प्लीज very beautiful words sir you brought me to my final uh, statement that i had to say final question and i will still ask it to get uh, the female perspective as well from our uh, from my friends as well as basharat bhai i would start with basharat bhai then burhan sahib would like your input on this as well that uh, what do you think ke aisa kiya kiya jaye what is the first step कि हम बड़े बड़े प्रपोजल्स तो कर देते हैं कि हम इसको इस तरह कर देंगे इसको यूं कर देना चाहिए यूं कर देना चाहिए पर वट डू यू थिंक इज द सोल्यूशन कॉन्क्रीट आंसर कि हमें ऐसा कौन सा साबित कदमी से काम लेना है कि इस प्रॉब्लम को टैकल करके हम खत्म करें वट डू वी डू टू टैकल दिस प्रॉब्लम एंड एंड इट आई विल टेक बशार खान साहब यू बिल्कुल आई थिंक जिस तरह बुरहान अंकल ने बात की है कि Uh, I just want to give a reply to Burhan Uncle before I give this answer. Is that fine? Uh, oh yes, please, please. Ah, uh, वो ये है कि ah, जिस तरह Burhan Uncle ने कहा है कि ये हम जिस तरह बड़े authority members की statements इस तरह की आ रही हैं कि victimize कर रहे हैं कि ये इसकी कसूरी है तो ये इसकी गलती है तो मेरा बस ये है कि ये हमारी बद किस्मती है कि हम लोगों ने ऐसे जाहिल लोगों को इतने बड़े होते दिए हुए हैं एक 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 इतनी ना उसने जिम्मेदार बात की है कि लोगों के सेंटीमेंट्स को इतना इतना हर्ट किया है लोग उठ पड़े हैं कि ये बंदे ने कैसी बात कर दी और ये हमें दिखाते हैं कि हम कहाँ खड़े हैं एज एज ह्यूम एज एज अ नेशन वेयर आर वी स्टैंडिंग राइट 
तो इस बात पे तो ये बात मैं करना चाह रहा था कि ये हमारी बदकिस्मती थी कि हमें इस तरह के इस तरह के लोगों को हमने अपने ऐसे ऐसे दिए हैं इतने बड़े ओहदे अब ये पुलिस का हालत तो फिर आप सोच सकते हैं कि अगर ये हेड का हालत तो फिर आगे का आगे लोगों का क्या हाल होगा Uh, coming back to your question hasan um, i think what we need to do as people is stand up for what's right hame haq pe khada hona padega standing up for what's right won't take your honor va- valor or dignity haq ka saath dein please standing up for what's right will better our society our community and our country jab sab haq ke saath ho jayenge na to justice system would require reformation thus putting an end to corruption the chain re- reaction would immediately eradicate more than 80 to 90% of the problems the country is facing let's stand up for what's right regardless of media coverage political influence or any influences uh, very beautiful words uh, bisharat sahib uh, very nice very nice burhan khan sahib i would like your input on this as well sir aisa kya kiya jaye ki hum log kare and then you see i tell you something um, back when this uh, motorway incident happened uh, i came up on uh, online with uh, some of my friends and there was such a you know strong reaction you may have saw that on a paper calling me name swearing at me on my facebook and my post- post- posting uh, posting my family's picture where we're sitting in a diwali and all that and blah 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 you name it but i stood fast so i said no the girl who was with us they shamed her the man who was with us did it but we continued after that i did another program with three teachers female uh, two teachers and one lawyer from calgary and that program went into the overseas pakistani foundation in pakistan and they responded what can we do small things and today is the third and this is you can see 39 live people are watching and it's a big deal i tell you it's a big deal uh, watching live 39 people 40 it went on 42 some sometimes you make a statement whoever this is will be recorded and i will share that on my youtube you make a summary and send it to the pm office i will give you the contacts send it to the pm office get the signature that we need to change the law you know since we announced this uh, uh, discussion i have a lot of people from other communities who are not muslim or pakistani they are questioning our islam they are questioning the pakistani government but the thing is let's not shy away from it we are here to talk about it i am here with my daughters i am here with my sons and my brothers this is we need to talk about it and we need to continue talking about it saying that the state of madina is not going to happen happen the state of madina unless otherwise i start changing myself and making sure that people of authority in pakistan and here will do that number 2 we shall also involve our religious leader here in calgary and canada and north america they have a very powerful tool mike this mic we are talking about right now is is a very powerful tool a lot of people are watching some people are recording it but i am going to question these three girls here my daughters here when was the last time you went to juma khutba or eid khutba and imam saab have talk about a family values say that one twice in last one year or let's say five years have anybody talked about it the women dignity value treating your daughter just like uh, hasan mentioned that fatima mere aankhon ki thandak hai yaar tum bhi to meri aankhon ki thandak ho manoor meri aankhon ki thandak hai iza meri aankhon ki thakkar hai misfa meri aankhon ki thandak hai pari amara sofia ye meri aankhon ki thandak hai kya imam sahab ne kabhi kaha ki apni betiyon ko sahi treat karo ab waqt aa gaya hai ki imam और जो हमारे रिलीजियस लीडर हैं जो हमारे कम्युनिटी लीडर हैं दे ओपनली कम एंड टॉक अबाउट इट आई एम सो हैप्पी टू सी ऑल दीस गर्ल्स हियर कमिंग वी आर यू सी ऑन अ फेसबुक पोस्ट फ्रेंड्स आर हैविंग बारबेक्यू देयर आर 100 पीपल नॉट सिंगल वुमेन व्हाई नॉट व्हाई नॉट आवर ब्लवेड प्रॉफिट हैव ऑलवेज इन्वॉल्व वुमेन इन डिसीजन मेकिंग वी आर लैकिंग दैट एंड टुडे इज द डे 
you guys came in and talk about it inshallah ta'ala it will make a difference number one write a proposal write the minutes of this meeting write all of your thing send it to the prime ministers uh the special assistant to overseas pakistani because this matters we have to deal with that we are the ambassador of pakistan and islam we have to safeguard our culture then we whenever we see any our beloved imam they're wonderful people any one of you pick their fine fine people tell them to start making this habit in their sermon and talk about a family values in their sermon that's what i have to say thank you very nice very nice thank you very much sir uh, and i would like to take a, a few if you guys would like to say anything manur uh, bisma or isa please yeah i totally agree with uh what uncle said what hasan said what bashar had said um the key is to the reason why we're doing this is to in instigate change um and it starts from us because we are the younger generation we're going to be the future leaders um and really it's really simple before you protect your daughter educate your son um and so that'll eliminate all the other problems that are coming out and even what uncle said about even in khutbas and sermons about mom speaking up we're lacking in that as well yeah yeah and, uh, uh, totally i would go ahead sorry bismillah you can go ahead yeah go ahead go ahead bishop <laughs> Oh sure, yeah. So, uh, uh, sorry, I was lagging. Uh, yeah. So, what I was gonna say is, I totally agree with what Burhan Uncle is saying, and I feel like this is gonna come from every house. Like, घर से तब्दीली शुरू होगी ना मतलब आप ये तो नहीं ना कोई बटन है कि प्रेस कर दिया तो बस सामने ये कर दिया लाइव सेशन तो बस अब तो पूरी दुनिया सीधी होगी ऐसे नहीं होगा ये घर से शुरू होगा ये अपने अखलाक वी हैव टू अपने अपने गिरेबान में झांकना पड़ेगा हमें हमें देखना पड़ेगा वी हैव टू एसेस आवर सेल्फ वेयर वी आर एज ह्यूमंस क्या कर रहे हैं एक दिन हमने मरना है अल्लाह को भी जवाब देना है एंड आई वुड आई वुड बी वेरी ब्लंट अबाउट दिस अभी और आई डोंट नो लाइक पीपल माइट लाइक इट माइट नॉट लाइक इट बट आई विल बी वेरी ब्लंट इन द स्टेटमेंट कि हम लोग एज गाइज दूसरी जब हम लोग बाहर जाते हैं लोग लड़कों में या सब कुछ तो हम लोग वी ट्राई टू we try to like uh, objectify women a lot ke yaar dekh bachchi check kar bachchi check kar ye kar wo kar aur yahi baat jab aapki behan pe baat aati hai to aapka to usi waqt uh, wo uh, mard jaag jata hai usi waqt to kya wo aapki behan nahi hai wo kisi ki behan nahi hai usko utni takleef nahi hogi jo aap uske sath kar rahe ho to i think hamare hamare andar double standards bhi bahut aag chuke hain as humans we have a lot of double standards ke apni apne tak baat rahegi na to sab theek hai dusre pe baat jayegi to nahi uh, hum log matlab koi baat nahi aise kar lenge aise kar lenge to hamare mere hisab se ye double standards bhi nikalne padenge we have to self assess ourselves and see ke yaar hum kar kya rahe hain zindagi mein hum kar kya rahe hain hum ye ye ho kya raha hai aur ye ek kism ki uh, क्यामत की निशानियां भी आती हैं कि यू नो वट्स गोइंग ऑन राइट नाउ इज लाइक ये सब कुछ तो हजूर सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम ने फरमा दिया बता कि ये सब कुछ होगा एंड आई फील लाइक कि हमें अपने अपने गिरबान में झांके अपने अपने गो बैक टू द ड्राइंग बोर्ड एंड सी मेक द पॉइंट अपने आप को चेंज करना शुरू करें एंड दी स्मॉल चेंजेस विल मेक यू अ सक्सेसफुल मैन इन द फ्यूचर अगर आप ऐसी हरकतों में रहोगे तो फिर अल्लाह तला भी आपसे कभी खुश नहीं होगा ना आप कभी जिंदगी में अपने आ, मतलब कोई आ, अपने अमाल थिंक दैट्स द मेन थिंग आई वांट टू से आई जस्ट वांट टू शेयर समथिंग वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड अपलिफ्टिंग फॉर यू यंग माइंड्स एंड लक्सट्रियस और यंग लीडर आई एम ग्लैड टू शेयर दैट विद यू यू कैन सी दैट डॉक्टर नवीन सैयद हैव जॉइंड अस एंड ही सेंट अ वेरी नाइस मैसेज आई कैन समन एंड ही समन इट हिमसेल्फ if dr navid sayed who is the authority and a scientist and a very loving father and a community member long message i don't want to read that you can read it later on but at the end he says actions we need actions and guys you have taken an action and you can read the dr uh, navid sayed that's up thank you very much for encouraging these young mind and they have taken such a bold step of coming up and uh, speaking clearly and loudly to us elders 
and we have i think responsibility too but in the meantime i would want you to take some action too. go ahead girls it's your time. yeah I mean, this is this is exactly why we did this, right? To spread awareness and to push for accountability, that people really need to, you know, uh, start taking actions, like you said, and and stop. This this needs to end, and and we are the people who are going to end it. Our generation is it. Thank you, Manur. Manur. Uh, yeah, like I said before, um, we really just started this whole the video, the letter, um, just to raise awareness. And I, I'd actually like to thank our entire PSA team. They, not everyone could obviously be on the live, but everyone worked really hard. Um, and it's just great to know that um, no matter how big or how small, um, we are making an impact. Thank you. And you know, just like you said, uh, Banur, before, that it is better to train our sons before daughter. Just like Pari said uh, in the beginning, that when I go, when she goes to Desi parties or dinner held by me or my brothers or whatnot, or community member, she has to be polite because we train her that way, right? But I am going to take your point, Manur, that we have to train my son too. Just like Basharat said, I always say that to my sons. I have three sons and mashallah, three daughters. I always that makes that aware my sons that treat the other women and girls the way you want your sister to be treated. And if you are treating them other one ill, Ill it's going to come around. What goes around, believe you me, it comes around. I've seen it. I've seen it. It comes around. If I am treating somebody's wife bad, someone else is going to treat my wife bad too, sooner or later. So just like Manu, you said, I'm going to take a stress on that point that we have to teach our sons too. We don't have to protect our daughters. We have to protect our sons that who are vulnerable from these evils. Basharat, am I saying right? That this is uh, Hassan, that we have to protect our sons from the evil. Daughters are okay. They are minding their own business and they've been trained very well and they've been raised very well. But it's the sons. What do you say? I, I, I totally agree. Hassan, you say something? I would uh, totally agree with you, sir, that uh, say, you know, what we see is the lady has to wear the hijab and it is a commandment from the religion and everything. But at the same time, it is modesty for the man as well. So if we're imposing hijab on the lady and not topi on the man, then we're kind of mistaken here. It's a double standard at the same time. So I do agree with what you're saying, but uh, to reach that step where we can make that difference, I think what we've done right now is the first step. So inshallah, we will slowly get there as well. Where we can say that Islam you is know, a state. This is a being an hour we have allocated. And if you just uh, whine, want to say some things, uh, Dr. Saab have uh, said another message. Please, anybody wants to answer that. It says, growing up with the sons were not even allowed by our dad to raise your voice louder than your younger sister. My father always used to say that, that today, if you raised your voice in front of your younger sister, uh, then tomorrow it will be your mother, your wife, and then your daughter. So that's uh, what Dr. Naveed Sayyid, who's an authority, mashallah. The, the, you see, your voice is being heard. Guys, congratulations. People are paying attention. It just we have to come out of our comfort zone and talk about it. Talk about it and not be shy about it. You are you are honored. We this is the you guys are honored, men and women, boys and girls. You are the future of this country and your religion and your heritage. You are the future. One final word from each one of you. Start with Bisma. Um, I would just, I guess, like to say that, inshallah, I guess with the, uh, with our initiative, um, you know, we we become 
successful in what we're trying to, you know, create awareness about, uh, and that we really push people to, you know, take accountability for their actions. Um, that's yeah. Thank you. Manur. Manur. Um, yeah, just go. Yeah, just to go off of what Bisma said, we really hope that people hopefully get inspired that, you know, if you if you see a problem, be part of the solution, no matter how big or how small. Um, and this is just our small way of, you know, going in the right direction, hopefully. Thank you. Basharat, Isa, I'll take your last final word. Basharat. <laughs> Uh, me? Uh, yeah. So uh, my la the last thing I would like to say is that, see, the thing is that you have to, like, you have to take an action. You can't just talk about it and talk about it and talk about it because a can say आवाज जाती दूसरे कान से बाहर. ठीक है ना? लोग आज अभी ये सब सुन रहे हैं. लोग जाएंगे, बैठेंगे, कहेंगे हाँ यार इन्होंने जो बात की थी सही की थी और फिर दो तीन दिनों में भूल जाएंगे. तो I think people have to stand up and be like, नहीं हमने अब हमने ये बात सुनी है और हमने इस पे अमल भी करना है वी हैव टू एक्शन वी हैव टू स्टार्ट फ्रॉम आवर हाउस अपने बच्चों से वेदर इट्स योर डॉटर और योर सन अगर अगर बेटियों पे ये आया है कि आप पर्दे में रहो तो उससे पहले की आयत भी uh, जो हम लोग मिस कर जाते हैं जो कुरान पाक में लिखी हुई है कि मर्द अपनी अपनी जो अपना हिजाब करें आंखों का हिजाब अपनी नजरें झुका के रखें वो हम भूल जाते हैं वो ठीक है बस हम औरतों के ऊपर अटैक करते रहते हैं तो मेरा ख्याल है कि अब टाइम आ गया कि अगर इस्लाम में हमें सिखाया है कि इक्वालिटी लेके आए तो हमें इक्वालिटी लेके आनी है और ये ऐसे है कि ये हम लोग जो है ना जो पिक एंड चूज करते हैं ना वो नहीं करना है हमने बी ऑनेस्ट यूर सर्फ be honest to yourself and don't pick and choose don't pick and choose follow the whole thing and that will make you a good person whether you are, and and ye ye baat jo mujhe bahut bahut mujhe dukh hota hai is baat ka ke log kya karte hain aage wali ayat le lete hain piche wali nahi padhte hain jo pehla jo jiske upar hukm aaya mardon ke upar pehle hukm aaya auraton se to bas ye main kehna chahunga ke don't pick and choose uh, follow the deen properly aur apne aap ko ek acha insaan banaye kyunki थोड़े दिनों की जिंदगी है फिर आप लोगों ने अल्लाह तला को भी जवाब देना है तो अभी से अगर आप सीखेंगे करेंगे और अपने बच्चों को इसी तरह बढ़ाएंगे क्योंकि आगे से लोग जनरेशन चेंज होती है आपने तो अभी उस सितारों से आगे जहां और है माशाल्लाह ये मेरे लिए कह सकते हैं आप हसन आप कुछ कहिए फिर मैं दो तीन कमेंट होते जो व्हाट आई वुड लाइक टू से इज माय डियर लिसनर्स फ्रेंड्स कम्युनिटी मेंबर्स that we've taken a huge responsibility upon ourselves that we're going to be bring in reform and for those of you who has who we have worked as a team all of you know that before we engaged in this activity of bringing change and bringing awareness humne yahi faisla kiya tha that we are going to focus on our learning as well that we have to do better we have to be better ke hum jis cheez ke bare mein keh rahe hain kahin hum uske sath hypocrisy to nahi kar rahe ke hum kisi cheez ke liye khade ho rahe hain hum uska sath khud nahi de rahe so we learned that we are going to be honest to ourselves we're going to change our characters if there is mistakes no one is born perfect other than rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam we can all try to follow in his footsteps so we're going to try to be the perfect role model in this world and this change i'm not telling you to change i'm not telling you to change your surroundings i'm urging each every single one of you just reflect upon yourself look at what you're doing see where you can improvise be the better person thank you thank you i'd like to respond to neha pracha uh, dr navid sayed the discussed yasser haki from uh, uh, toronto and bini uh, from delhi uh, they are watching people from delhi even watching so therefore you see uh, neha thank you very much and neha pracha she said in quran it says lower your gaze and that's very important that controlling your gaze the lower your gaze when you you are in the presence of a lady lower your gaze and that's my responsibility and the responsibility just like hasan said we have taken the responsibility upon ourselves as a man as a father as a brother as a son this is our responsibility well let's not always make a women a symbol of uh, honor and dishonor it is our responsibility to sustain that among ourselves we have to honor her first then the demand the honor from us so basically what it is is a you being a president i would like you to summon up 
uh, our today's meeting and say the final word and what message would you want to give it to the community? Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for hosting this live event. Uh, it is very important to us and we're glad that we got to bring awareness about this topic. And again, like, as you mentioned that um, education like it starts from the home and I do agree that the girls should be educated and uh, education that you should be able to do your own work. Yes, And obviously, aap, uh, what goes around comes around, right? Karma. So if you treat um, another person's woman or kisi uh, ki is it badly, then obviously, Yes, life is a full circle again, like what goes around comes around. So I would just like to leave it off of, uh, over there that again, unless we educate ourselves. So we should educate ourselves first and then, then we can only bring a change to this world. Thank you very much, guys. This was a very uh, bright moment and very uh, intelligent discussion. I'm glad that the Calgary has uh, such uh, bright minds and the young, illustrious students uh, from uh, University, Montreal University. I would like to thank Amara. I'd like to thank Parisa, Pari, and uh, Bisma, Mahnoor, Iza, Basharat, and Hassan Bhai. Thank you very much. And I would like to thank all the people who participated with their comments. And uh, as it is said, the summary uh, will be available uh, for all of you that, uh, you know, um, for to go to the Prime Minister of Pakistan. And here there are number of, uh, if you are going through stress here in Calgary, there is a distress center. Uh, Mount Royal University has a uh, available help system. So therefore, we, we have a help available. But it's uh, the time that we come out and talk about it. I salute you guys. You have taken a very bold step. Inshallah, Tala, we will continue to do that in the future. And let's make a change. Allah Hafiz to all of you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.